Oh, you know, I don't all of it was done. So, I'm Derek Carey, talking with famous people, and we are talking tonight about the the use of FI to compare and order matters of personal value to yourself, like how much you care about something, right? That one of the reasons Margie said that. One of the qualities of the ENTP with 7 slot FI is that our internal valuing compass is almost non-existent. And I was struck by that at first, I think as Taylor was at first, with a certain amount of like, no. <laughs> but uh, I thought about it more than 7-Eleven. I think the whole idea of using FI to, to compare values of things is entirely foreign to me. That when... Uh, a second ago, a little while ago, um, JC was discussing using her own FI to compare and order the value of various things in her life. That's the first time I'd heard it described like that before. And it makes me realize that, I mean, it, or I, I've come to the conclusion that indeed I don't have very good instincts about that. I, I don't know how I'm going to, uh, particularly about how I'm going to, like it, like Taylor mentioned earlier, am I going to miss something? Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to miss it or not. I'm not sure really. Sentimental value to me seems this almost artificial construct that I choose to affix to things. And so I don't really quite understand it when something that I didn't choose to affix sentimental value to seems to have it anyway. And I think that that's the phenomenon of uh, a failure of, of a non-existent internal valuing compass. I think we compensate with TI and we learn to say, well, this ought to be more valuable. This has more... We, we, we learn to compensate with TI, which means basically we're evaluating things on their utility or their effectiveness. Even though TI is not TE, that's what TI has to work with as an alternative to um, to emotionalism. So, I mean, I don't know if if we end up Actually, functionally being poorly able to to understand what we place prior, what we place value on, and what we don't, I think in the end we end up becoming quite utilitarian in our valuings because we see things as their role in the system and their ability to enable other things or, or disable other things. Initial thoughts on those comments of mine? Sounds a hundred percent accurate. Hmm. Next time I'm only going to give 90%. That way you can talk about the other 10%. <laughs> Host Ken? Oh, hello. Lightbulb is saying you don't know how you valued categorized feelings because it's unconscious. You find out when that piece is no longer in its proper place. That's how she was talking about the um. Interesting. So we want to lose our feelings when they're fucked up. So FI, the FI to SI link. Okay, well, that's cool. That's one of the topics that I wanted to talk about tonight, actually, was this, how I think that SI is how non-FI people like me access FI and realize that um, something was uh, was valued and ought to have been valued and was important to me, you know? I remember I had a dream before I married my first wife in which I... I mean, the dream was pretty clear, like, screaming at me, don't marry this woman, you know. But, uh, you know, everybody was expecting it at that point. I had gone so far along the process. You know, you can't back out Were now. Huh? Were you in love? No. Did you get tired of that question? At the time? Yeah. Um, I think... You didn't ask that a lot? I think I just faked the answers. I think I just, of course. I think I just did that. I, I didn't. I didn't understand what the question meant. I thought it meant like, are you going to marry this person? <laughs> of course. Are you in love with her? Yes. Well, I, mean, he, I proposed, don't... right? There's. there's <laughs> right. That's a hint. <laughs> well, she's a woman, and I'm planning on impregnating her, so. Uh, therefore, I must love her. <laughs> you know how that goes. I don't think I've heard anything more romantic in my life. That was... <laughs> I almost cried. Yeah. 
But you learn a lot from that first one. Boy, do you learn a lot. See, that's where your, your valuing system just fails, right? Because we assume, because we don't really understand that we inherently value one thing over another, that we assume we get to choose. <laughs> oh, I'll just choose which, I, which things I value. That makes more sense. But, of course, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's like... Which yeah, is illogical, and, and then that creates a whole other set of problems because then you can't, like, tell yourself, I don't know, to stop being so retarded. I gotta stop. Why I gotta stop with the derogatory the stuff. Uh, value and value judgments are two separate things. Uh, that could be the conclusion you got married the first yeah, time. Yeah, I think I think my lab is covering up the speakers. Uh, oh, pretty sure you got married the first time for like a nice. Pretty ass. Yeah, I'm married to an ass. Boobs. Um, and not first. She was time asking why you got married. Yeah, I'm curious. First time, what? I was. I wanted a kid. A what? A kid. I wanted a kid. Oh. Well, okay. And I found a woman I felt would do. Basically, she had <laughs> wide hips. You know, she had wide childbearing hips. She looked like she'd have no problem having a kid, and um. She was Catholic, so I figured that would mean that she'd be well-behaved, but she wasn't well-behaved at all. I mean, she, she, she cheated on me, you know, so it was that's what ended the marriage, but she cheated on me. Eric would hunt the elk, and she'd bear many sons. That was the reason. <laughs> that, that he would was gather food, and she would forage. <laughs> <laughs> but, in fact, but I did get out of her my child, and after uh, the marriage fell apart, which because the thing is, I sort of thought, well, look, now I've got my kid. Now, look, you go hang out with your friends or whatever, and I'll just do my thing with my child. And you know. but she, she, we never really <laughs> liked each other very much, you know. I, I never really liked her very much. So I, I like I like how you just kind of broke it down to a business arrangement. I got like a one kid. How much is that going to cost? I swear to God, I've, I've said that if I could just have another daughter without actually having to do anything with my ex-wife, I'd take another one. Just like that one. I'd take another one, too. For sure. I want another kid. But it comes with the, it comes with the mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk so about how many Rose. people in the comment section are just appalled at this? I don't know. Are people, are people find this appalling? I mean, to me, I think it was a poor idea on my part. It was like, Okay, yes, you want to have a kid, Eric, but you should, you should, like, hold out longer or something. Yeah. Uh, JC hey. was wondering what, what type was your first wife? If you I think knew. she was an INFP. <laughs> Eric, what'd you do? Yeah, I think she was an INFP. So, uh, anyway. My second marriage was a lot better. I learned from that marriage, right? I learned, okay, I, I, this stuff does matter to me. I should like the woman I marry. You know? Preferably. That's called non-existent valuing compass. Internal valuing compass. Oh, it's fine. I'll adopt. I'll adapt. She'll... She'll, you know, to the extent that I don't like her, it's fine. She can do her own thing. I can do my own thing. It doesn't matter as long as she's a good mother. But it does matter. Of course it matters. <laughs> of course it matters a great deal. But I, I'm very convincing. I was very convincing with myself that it wasn't going to matter. I was sure it wasn't going to matter. But it's kind of annoying coming home and having just that, that person there all the time. Right. So, you actually kind of have to like them, or at least not mind them. Right, well, I know that now, Taylor, thank you. Well, the, my well, last marriage was fine. <laughs> my last marriage doc, was good. Was Dr. Fine. Taylor over here. <laughs> I'm, fig I'm just uh, figuring it out for myself. It, the divorce was so dirty and, and not amicable for me that I never really even really thought about that aspect of it'll do. Or, yeah. But that probably was there. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you want to nail that part of, of life down, which I always did, I, I was like, okay, I don't, I'm tired of thinking and worrying about chicks at all. I, I'm tired of it. I want that, that part settled. I want to put that part to bed so I don't have to worry about... But that's yeah. the trap, is they're never done needing stuff. Well, see, that's not necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. I mean, but look, neither are the guy, neither are we. We're never done needing stuff either. We're, just, we're kind of high maintenance. You guys are um, just big kids. I'm sure you've been compared to, like, an adult child. That sounded weird. Um, yeah, many times. Okay. I have. You have like the intelligence of a really smart person, like, but you act like a You're too smart to be so so mature. Right. I've been told I'm immature. Child. You're really, like, really smart, but you're not applying yourself. Unprofessional. I've been called unprofessional. I hate being called unprofessional. It's the least favorite thing in the world to be called, because it's I'm always unprofessional when I'm being called that. So I really don't want to be called that at that point. Like, ah, stop with that. You're pointing out true things. I hate it. You know, you guys got all this advice. I haven't even gotten into the game yet. Who, who should who should I get with? What do you think? Because I'm thinking maybe ESTP or something. That's what you're supposed to maybe. get with, ESTP. Supposed to. See, I was yeah. thinking somebody with uh, specifically extroverted sensing because I'm not sure. I think NSI would get a little too disgruntled with me. Yeah, be like, could I you think, organize this? And I'd be like, nope. No. I, I think ESTP is a good one for for you guys because they they have the same T I F E switch as ENTP with you. That's why ENTPs get along well with both um, ISFJs and INFJs because of the T I F E switch. If you've got the same two threes but in reverse order, you're probably going to get along really well because it's like. You're you're helping me with my third, and I feel pretty. I mean, it's like we both feel strong in both areas, but we don't feel like we step on each other's toes. So we both feel a little bit better than the other one in one of the two areas, you know. So it works out well that relationship. But with ESTP, you get that plus you get the SE you're talking about, and then you get uh, NI in the fourth slot. Now keep in mind. ESTPs are vulnerable to cults, um, ideologies, and other um, singular visions of reality that might overtake their their psyche. So you have to protect them against that. That's your job as INFJs to be like, no, sweetie, your NI is telling you wrong. That that cult leader is not a good person to follow. Yes. Uh, what do you say? ESTPs are are, are what? Susceptible to charismatic leader syndrome, either being them or following them. Your sister joined my church pretty quickly. Yeah, not Joined your church? Do you have a church, Taylor? Well, I did have a church. I was starting. I was starting my own religion. Oh, what? What? What was it? What was it? It was just. Well, it was founded on the principle of Taylor's always right. <laughs> still, still a, an existing truth, the universal I truth. I thought it was like founded on the joke that you're God. Oh no, it wasn't a joke. It was, it was, it was founded on. It was founded on your mom. It was founded on the accusation that was my joke that I'm the devil. Oh. Not possessed, not evil. That uh, I'm Satan, which isn't which isn't a compliment. I mean, I'm inclined to think you're in Tropotropocles. Huh? I'm inclined to think you're in Tropotropocles. I think you're more in Tropotropocles than I am. And Tropotropocles is the god of stumbles and confusion and Gospel of the Pantheon, which is a book I wrote that has gods in it. But um, one of the gods... Which could be yours now for only three easy payments of 1995. It can be yours now for free. It's available for a limited time only for free. It's true. You can download the PDF right now if you wanted to. 
But um, eventually, I do plan to sell it on the website. I don't know if anybody's going to buy it or not. It's a good book, but everybody seems to get bogged down in the second chapter. So I need to pull out the second chapter, third chapter, whichever chapter these people get bogged down in. At, but once yeah. you get past that, always finish it. Anyway, that's enough of that. That's uh, not what I intended to be talking about there. So, uh, what's the topic of this video? FE or something. Oh, FI. Whatever. Oh, yeah, FI valuing function. Right. That's that's her first first function, right? Do you know I, what's I, important to you? Do you have a clear understanding of what's more important to, your, to you than what's, and what's less important to you? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. You don't know how uh, to answer that question? Not necessarily, no. I mean, like... Probably the people that I love is what's most important to me. They're happy, and unfortunately, I'm kind of the person that lives off of other people's happiness. If the people around me aren't happy, then I won't be happy, because I quite literally feel for you. Unfortunately, she says. <laughs> okay, so a lot of empathy, yes. or what? You just got a lot of empathy? You're chock full of empathy? I guess. Huh. You're trying to get her to think about how she feels, and it's it's a dead end road. Have you traveled that road before, or what? All the time. So, do you, do you ever feel like uh, if people make a habit of just being like fussy about stuff, or if they're just sort of complaining a lot, do you ever feel like you're a victim of that? Someone's like overly fussy, almost like they're doing it to you. Yeah, actually, that's actually a, a very good way to put it. Yeah, that'll annoy the crap out of Yeah, people. yeah, she, she's empathetic until someone's trying to hurt her empathy. In, in that case, I would probably seem selfish, but... You are in, selfish, well, just in a very giving way. You mask your selfishness better than the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> you get no moral high ground, Katie! None! <laughs> Is that what you're saying, Taylor? Loud and clear. All right, so what do you say no either way? I'd say no either way. Who? What does that mean? I don't know what who is. He's asking, are you the devil? Because he said something about being the devil and the light bulb asked, are you? What's the who mean, though? H-U. Did you mean a huh, Taylor? Right. Uh, <clears throat> no, when, we, when I was talking about how I was accused of being the devil, Lightbulb said, are you? And I said, I'd say no. I'd say no. Why, huh? Like, it doesn't, if I was the devil or if I wasn't the devil, I'd still say no. Oh, that's huh. Okay. Uh, Cause, right. Because you said who. See, this is probably why, why people like Nick get hurt when I send them messages and texts. Well, you could, there needs to be a sarcasm to figure out whether you're concerned about Nick being No, sad I'm trying to figure out whether I'm getting fucked with. You gotta put a winky. I'm not putting oh, a winky. Oh, yeah. I'm oh. not putting a winky. You gotta get over look, that, look, dude. Look at, you gotta get... Emoticons look. are super powerful. They're powerful time magic. You gotta utilize them. Smiley and winkies. You only need two of them. You only need two. Smiley and winkies. Parameters. There are parameters of, of my physical personal space bubble that I expect to be respected and he's also not gonna bust your bubble. Not my physical space one, he's very good about that one. But and and the the just general behavior and interactions bubble. Hmm. Just look at like Are you saying giving you emoticon advice violates the integrity of that bubble? I'm saying that it weakens the message and the learning experience for him. Uh, <laughs> oh, such a fucking like ENTP bubble. response. <laughs> this is a learning experience for him. I'm not going to waste it with an emoticon. That's fucking ENTP in a nutshell right there. No, what if I'm helping he, him learn his wrongness. 
Well, what if what if the only emoticons you had at your disposal were all just sort of flippant or just sort of aloof emoticons? Like you could give someone the middle finger for an emoticon or uh... a good sarcasm or or you know, like th that's what I need. I need. I've been wanting a uh, kind of a condescending or like a are you retarded sort of sort of emoticon. And I also want sarcasm font. Perhaps if someone invents a sarcasm font, they'll be rich. I mean, um, well, we have to sort of naturally convey sarcasm. I'm not sure what a font would look like that naturally convey. I like your little wiener dog, dude. Host Ken, that wiener dog is great. <laughs> come over here to <laughs> that sentence was just fine without the dog on the end. If you just stopped a little bit earlier. No, I love <laughs> Wiener Dogs. Wiener Dogs are great. Uh, anyway. He's not complying. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. There's a side eye emoji. A side eye. What's side eye? It means you're looking to the side. Uh, words. I use that one sometimes. It's like a it's like a smirk, kind of like... It's like a wall, almost. Don't you leave. 12 <laughs> degrees of meh. We need 12 different degrees of meh. Oh, what a cutie pie. Yep. Oh, it's not really a wiener dog, is it? It's like a, it's like a Scotty it's a chihuahua dog. mix. Uh, it's part chihuahua, part Scotty dog, part wiener dog, or what? Something. He's actually had that gray beard since he was born. It's mate bait. Aww. That's a beautiful dog. Okay, well, with that, let's end this episode of Talking with Friends People. That's my feelings on the matter. I feel like that dog is cool. <laughs>